Next example is dealing with a curvier polynomial. It's not linear anymore. We have higher powers than just one. So in this example, the concentration C in parts per million of a certain antibiotic in the bloodstream after T hours is given by this polynomial equation. So again, what do these pieces mean? C is our concentration and T was mm -hmm, mm -hmm, hours in the bloodstream. T hours. All right, so we want to find the concentration after two hours. So what piece of information do we have? Which one are we solving for? Pretty straightforward. We want C, and I know that T is equal to two. So when T is equal to two hours, what does that mean for my concentration? I can plug it in and evaluate. Again, wherever I see T, my variable, put parentheses around it so we don't make any mistakes. So many twos. So, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, what has to happen first? Inside of the parentheses, we can't simplify, so we need to do the exponents. Two squared gives me four. And we can evaluate these. I've got four plus two. Multiplication happens next. Multiplication, then we can start adding and subtracting together. So this guy is going to be negative 0.2, and we're adding 6 to it. So 5.8. And this is parts per million after two hours. So it's important to say at what time this is happening, because the polynomial is dynamic. Whatever I plug in for T, C is going to be based on that. Your concentration when you first take antibiotics is going to be different than at the end of the day after it's been in your system. So specifying when it's happening is important for these kinds of questions. So that concentration was 5.8 parts per million after two hours. So now if we take a peek at the graph, if we evaluate the polynomial for several ver uh, values of t, the graph of the polynomial can be seen below. It's curvy. And why is it only in the first quadrant? Why is our graph only in the first quadrant? Does it ever make sense to have negative time or negative concentration of something? No. So that's why we're in the first quadrant. I have positive time, so zero is our starting value all the way until, you know, some 40 hours afterwards, the concentration dies off. And positive concentration as well. So the initial, when you're first swallowing it, you're looking at two parts per million. Then from there, it changes. So the graph uses that first quadrant since neither time or concentration can be negative. And what happens with this? Concentration, where is it peaking at? When do I have the highest concentration of this antibiotic? So my concentration peaks at 22 parts per million. And when does that happen? So following that down to the x-axis, I'm looking at 20 hours. Okay? And then when is the concentration zero? When is it leaving your system? Sometime after 40 hours, we can see the drug is completely out of your system. So using that graph only, don't go back to the formula, determine the approximate value of the polynomial when t is 3 and t is 26. So 3 hours after you take the initial antibiotic and 26 hours after you take the initial antibiotic. What are we looking at? So if we go over to 3 on our x-axis, that represents time, follow it up to our polynomial, and over to the y-axis, or in this case, the concentration axis, what are we looking at? So at t equal to 3, my concentration is approximately around mm, 7.5 parts per million. 
our estimations might be a little bit off. And then at 26, 26 hours after you've taken it, what is our approximated concentration at that, at that point? So again, going over to 26, up to our polynomial, where is it hitting? Around maybe mm, 20.1 parts per million at the 26 hour mark. So we can sum that up pretty concisely. I've got at T, my concentration is around 7.5 parts per million. Concentration after 26 hours, around 20.1 parts per million. So hopefully you can see kind of the, the lacking factor of just looking at the graph. Your estimation might be a little bit off from mine, or maybe off from someone else in this class. But if we use this formula, then we all have the same precise, exact measurement at that time.